Hello and welcome. My name is Tom Goldsby. I'm uh, from the University of Tennessee. It's my pleasure on behalf of Kerber Supply Chain to welcome you to today's masterclass session. Uh, today's class is titled, How Does Automation Drive Cold Storage Efficiencies? And we're really pleased to be joined today by Kerber Supply Chain's Head of International Sales and Marketing, Mr. Mark Vogt, who is joining us uh, in uh, the south of Germany. So, good dog to you. <laughs> That's about the extent of my German, Mark. So uh, uh, please, please excuse me with that. But yeah, <laughs> fine, <laughs> they're good. <laughs> so uh, we're we're delighted to have Mark on hand again. I'm Tom Goldsby, a professor of supply chain management, Haslam Chair of Logistics at the University of Tennessee in beautiful Knoxville, Tennessee, and I also serve as the co-editor in chief for the Journal of Business Logistics. Today's featured speaker is Mr. Mark Vogt. Again, he is the head of international sales and marketing for Kerber Supply Chain. He's responsible for international sales and system integration solutions. Uh, he brings almost 26 years of experience in intra-logistics automation in consultancy, sales, and project management. I had a chance to get to know Mark in the past few days, and he brings a, a world of experience uh, to today's topic. He is certainly uh, a foremost expert to, to deliver what we're looking for. So he's experienced in a wide range of knowledge uh, and application, fully automated solutions. And uh, this dates back to some early experience around the turn of the, the millennium or in, in 2000, um, where he's, he's installed the first deep freeze high bay warehouse automation uh, project. Um, and it just just continues to build upon those experiences in a in a multitude of settings. So again, we're really pleased to have you on hand, Mark, uh, to be our expert uh, today. And some of you might be wondering if this is your first time joining a Kerber Supply Chain Masterclass session. Realize that many of you have perhaps been with us in previous sessions, but let me first explain why we're here, what we're trying to accomplish. Well, the purpose is to tackle the challenges of today's increasingly complex supply chain, bringing you best practices and innovative thinking from academics like myself and industry insiders, and senior leaders like Mark. Uh, we're trying to accomplish the following. We wanna provide you with guidance and insights in managing your supply chains as a competitive advantage, a strategic asset, an opportunity to excel and ultimately conquer that supply chain complexity, which seems to grow with each and every passing day. So there you see the schedule that we have uh, achieved for this masterclass. This is the fifth and final session in the series. However, if you missed anything, uh, don't worry. There is the opportunity to go back and watch any of the previous four sessions. And this session is also being recorded so that you can go back and watch it or perhaps share it. And I also do wanna take this opportunity to make you aware that the, uh, the party continues. We're going to have another masterclass series start in three weeks time, starting on July 14 in the same Tuesday, Thursday cadence. Uh, this masterclass series though is dedicated to warehouse technology excellence. And we're gonna cover a wide variety of technologies, both information technology as well as equipment technology and how those need to be integrated. So uh, with that, Mark, you are the anchor. So uh, we're looking forward to, to your strong finish today. Just a couple of housekeeping items though, before we, we get into today's comments, all of your phone lines out there are muted. As I indicated, today's class is re being recorded and you'll have an opportunity to, to view it at a later time. And also we're gonna make a handout available uh, with it that we'll send out within 48 hours as well. Uh, there's some fresh hot off the presses research from Kerber Supply Chain. I, I would like to encourage you as we get this session started, don't keep your questions uh, to yourself. Please share those questions and you can do so by clicking on the questions tab in your GoToWebinar menu. And you may submit those questions at any time and I'll be monitoring those. But speaking of questions, let's get to today's poll question. Have you automated any steps of your supply chain processes? And let's take a look at the results of the opening poll. And 55% indicated no, but we are planning to automate in the future, which is very exciting. And I think that's uh, entirely appropriate that uh, you find yourselves with us today. 27% uh, is the next response uh, in, in, in frequency. We see, yes, some processes have been automated, 
And then 9% uh, equally are saying we are fully all automated and another 9% saying no, and we do not plan to automate. So um, sounds like a, a very uh, diverse crowd out there. And we welcome uh, your experience, whether you're seasoned in automation or you're fairly new to it. I think Mark's insights are going to uh, advance all of your knowledge bases. So let's go ahead and, and just kind of set uh, Mark up here a little bit with a few observations that I came across as I was researching the topic of automation and cold storage before the session. And these are some quotes that I came across. Granted, uh, they're a little bit dated. I mean, they're only from September of last year, but we know that the world has changed so much uh, in the past nine months. But the point being, these uh, were executives in the real estate market. Uh, industrial real estate developers who were commenting on cold storage growth and how dynamic the market is. And I, I think that uh, if we can summate uh, across these observations, it's again that there's intense focus and interest in, in cold storage. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing growth, we're seeing need to get to market fast, and yet still needing to accommodate the integrity of the products throughout. In fact, the challenges and pressures on us to, to ensure integrity are, are, have never been greater. And all the while, while there's uh, immense growth taking place. Which then leads me into just a couple of observations that I usually share with my students. Uh, this next slide then is a, uh, a, a pardon, it's a, it's a pretty confusing graph uh, at the outset. But um, if you simply focus on the horizontal axis, which speaks of throughput volume over time, and then the vertical axis of total cost, and really what we're capturing here is a summation of your fixed cost investment along that vertical, and then the variable cost is depicted based on the slope of the respective curves, you see different options that are available to us uh, with regard to warehousing, whether we're talking dry ambient or, or refrigerated cold storage. And, and what this slide that I have to admit I've been using for many, many years uh, suggests is that you really only want to entertain automation if you're way out toward the right end of the throughput spectrum. If you're producing in very high volumes, and I'd go even further to say if you're uh, handling standard product where there's not much variety in size, weight, shape of product. And Mark, I think you're gonna be able to challenge this myth uh, with your presentations that perhaps automation can be introduced at lower volumes and also with non-standard product. But let me just share one more slide and I'll turn things over to you that uh, this is another slide that just helps my students to understand the basic functionality of a warehouse, the activities that are performed uh, upon arrival of product, uh, at the time of an order receipt, uh, so preparing sh for shipment, and then ultimately what we call the all the while, the activities that take place in terms of maintaining a clean, safe, neat, orderly work environment in the warehouse. And uh, automation arguably could fit anywhere across the spectrum of activities. And, and Mark, uh, I, we're gonna be looking to you to uh, again, illuminate where automation has found success, um, some of the case experience that you have, as well as where you see the industry moving. So with that, Mark, I'm gonna step aside and uh, welcome you to the fore. Yeah, Tom, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Thank you for that. And uh, a warm welcome to all of you, also from my side. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Here means at home, but uh, in the webinar and uh, to share my, my insights and my experience concerning fully automated solutions or partial automated solutions in the cold store. So um, I would like to give you some, some insights. I would like to present you some benefits caused by automation, but first of all, I would like to share some trend, trends in, in, in the frozen environment, in the, in the industry of the frozen products, um, some trends which I see. First of all, the market of deep frozen goods is growing. I think that is quite clear and uh, additional growth was caused by, by the COVID-19 
I think all of you, you, you bought some, some frozen foods in, in, in the last uh, two or three months. And then as I did with my family and we cooked at home and, and we were happy to, to have some, some frozen uh, food to, to help us uh, to, yeah, to be able to uh, cook our own, own meal. Um, another trend is that uh, the variance of the product is getting higher. So uh, more and more different food uh, products, different goods are available as, uh, in, in frozen. And um, also the, the, different, the different kind of um, products are getting higher. So uh, in the past, you had just five different kind of pit, uh, frozen pizza. In the meanwhile, you have 25 um, um, different kind of uh, deep frozen pizza in, in the store, which, which you can buy. Um, another um, trend is that uh, you have to take care um, as a supplier, as a producer, as a supplier of logistic, you have to take care about the cold chain. So uh, if you have a frozen food and uh, it always has to, to um, be cold and um, you have to take care about that and of course, we have to control that and we have to document that. So the, the food should always be uh, less than minus uh, 18 degrees and then that's very important um, to take care about it. Another topic, another trend which is coming more and more is uh, traceability. So called from farm to fork, you have to record um, where the product was produced, what, what uh, yeah, what kind of components, uh, when was it produced and so on. So uh, you have to, to trace, uh, track and trace what, what happened to the food uh, in, in the past. Um, another trend which I can see uh, um, is, is um, that the number of different, or the number of pieces of a product which is ordered by the shops or is ordered by, by a customer is getting down because you have more and more different uh, kind of products and uh, in, in shop which is very typical for Europe you have a limited shop and uh, so all the space in the, in, the, in the shop is limited and uh, you would like to present to the end customer more, more different kind of, uh, of the product of flavors but you have the, the same space available so uh, the number of order pieces uh, is getting down and also how to deliver it to the shops, for example. So you cannot uh, deliver complete pallets, you have to deliver just half pallets or even item-wise you have to deliver it to the shops. So that changes also all the, the process in the logistics and changes. Um, yeah, There's more focus on, on picking and, and uh, to have mixed pallets. So that are the main trends I currently can see on the market and which change um, dramatically um, yeah, the processes in a, in a, in a company and uh, change the, the processes for the logistic. Um, coming to the next slide, just to get, uh, I was impressed how many of you already have experience with automation and also with fully automated uh, solutions. Um, so maybe you already know that, that kind of slide, but uh, with that slide I wanted to show how um, the process is in, for example, a company who produce bakery products deep frozen. So deep frozen bakery products. So first of all, you have to, to manufacture the, the bread or the, the bakery product, then you will bake it. You will cool it down, then you will freeze it to, to the minus temperature. Then sometimes you have to cut it uh, or you have to make some portions. Then the, the product will, will be packed in a primary package. Then there will be, of course, a quality check. Then it will be packed in a secondary package, which means a carton or something like that. You can, how you can see it in, in the picture there. Then you have, uh, that was the production, let's say like this. Now we're coming to the logistics. We have palletizing, we have wrapping, we have labeling, we have storing. Then we have uh, the preparation, dispatch, truck loading, and then it goes to the end customer, to the shops or, or whatever. And uh, there are two steps are missing in that, in that process chart. We have also, um, um, 
as we already said, we have mixed pellets, for example, so therefore we have a picking process, or even we also have to put different flavor of flavors of a product in one secondary package. So as you can see in the picture, there might be different kind of bread in one in one carbon. So um, that are the main the main steps of the process in a company who produce deep frozen bakery products. And um, yeah, of course, typically very often the produ production is automated. Um, but uh, the areas and the steps in the logistics are very often manual, or you have some some uh, in some areas you have a partial automation. For, it, for example, pelletizing is, is automated, but storing and, and truck loading is maybe manual. But it's really possible, and we already have done several projects like this. You can have a fully automated solution from the oven. Um, to the truck or into the truck. So that's that's absolutely possible. And I would like to go a little bit deeper in, in that topic with you uh, with the next slide. Um, I think as, as usual, the core business, the core question is, uh, what about the costs? What about the costs for having a, a process manual or what about the costs um, how, um, what are the costs for having the, the process automated? Uh, and um, if I see Tom's slide with the, the curve or the cost curve, and I, I have a clear answer to that. Um, yeah, the, cash, the, the, the answer is it depends. It depends on a, on a lot of different parameters. So um, as, as Tom already mentioned, if you have a high performance, it sounds like automation solution is, is maybe better. Um, but there might be also other reasons. You have labor costs, you have maybe available space, you can make a, a fully automated solutions up to 40 meters high you know, to store pallets in 40 meters height. That's not possible to do it with a manual solution. So it, there might be different parameter which uh, forces you to use an automated solution. In general, of course, the investment for automated solution, you will need more technical equipment, you will need more, yeah, more automation, the, the investment will be higher, but the running costs are lower. So if you, especially if you have a 24 seven uh, operation and you will need a lot of labors for the, for uh, creating a pallet to, to, to for palletizing. Um, and, and if you make a cost calculation, you will easily find out that the automation makes absolutely sense for that. But as I said, different parameters influence uh, the, the decision, should it be automated or should it be manual? Um, there's another, another topic you have to, to, to think about, what about labor? And that will show us the next slide. Um, if you take care about the labor, we already spoke about the labor costs. Yes, that, that might be a reason for, for uh, to use an automation, but there are also different aspects. For example, um, there are a lot of regions where it's difficult to hire suitable um, employees who would like and are also are um, qualified enough to work um, um, for picking in a frozen environment. So uh, that could be also a solution. Um, the automation could be a solution um, because you will not have enough employees available, uh, available. And I think to get independence from labor was also shown by, by the current COVID-19 uh, pandemic um, to have processes automated and you will not need so many workers to do the processes that helps you, uh, that helps you in, in, the, in that case. On the other hand, if, if you see uh, the perspective from, uh, from the worker, it's really hard to work in minus temperature. It's also hard, it's, it's um, yeah, it's very common to have as a fire protection uh, used uh, reduced oxygen in, in a hyper warehouse. So to avoid that the fire could um, could go, grow up, um, um, could fire in, in, in a warehouse, in a fully automated warehouse, you can re reduce the oxygen and then you are safe. There will be no fire in it. But for for, for the human, for the workers, it's tough to work by only 16, 7, 
percent um, oxygen in, in the air. Huh? So that's that's uh, another topic. And of course, um, you would like to 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 take care about the health of your workers, and therefore you would like to have economic workplaces. And maybe it makes sense to have solutions to bring the goods to the worker with, with uh, goods to men work um, workstations. Not as the worker has to walk along all the, the, the racks in, in, the, in the warehouse, but there will be some conveyor system. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of conveyor system, but there will be a, con a kind of conveyor system by HVs, by, by fixed conveyors, whatever, and brings the goods to the worker and he's just st st standing at his uh, workstation and he's doing the picking. So there might be different point of views. Uh, concerning the labor, uh, that an automation solution fits very well for you. Um, coming to a, to a next topic, a next view. What about processes? Um, there might be there might be different um, point of views. To um, at the end, you would like to have a secure process. On the one hand, there shouldn't be any damage. If you have a worker on a, on a forklift, it could happen that uh, there will be damages to the rack, or there could be damages even, there could be damages uh, to the good. So they, they, they make an accident with a pallet or destroy the, the good. So if you have an automated solution, that will not happen. So that's that's another argument for, for automated solutions. Um, also, to take care about the quality of the frozen uh, cold goods, um, with automation, there will be not any problem. So uh, you can record um, um, what happened with the with the frozen goods on the conveyor system. You will always keep it in the minus temperature. Uh, and if you have positive temperature, you can take care that uh, the good is not the pallet is not too long in positive temperature. And uh, yeah, you can have different scenarios to avoid that. Huh? So that's all controlled. By, by the automation, and that's all um, also recorded by, by the automation, what happened to the, to the good. And concerning traceability, we already spoke a little bit about it. It's, it's, also, it's, it's the same. Huh? With automation, it's really easy to track and trace what happened um, with, with all the frozen good, and uh, there will be no, no worker will take a good out and take another good in and so on. So there will be no no changes, there will be nothing. So the automation solution really takes care that uh, there will be nothing with, with the good. So um, that is another aspect for an automated solution to have secured processes. Um, coming to the next slide to have a, a, sm a small conclusion about it. So my statement is, and maybe Tom, we can discuss about it if you see it in the same same direction. Uh, so my statement is, automation is needed for the efficiencies in the cold chain. The question is, how many of it? So what is the application rate? Rate is it really a fully automated solution from the production into the truck, or is it maybe a solution? which is just um, in some, some areas for palletizing or for storing. So that is, that is a question. Um, what is the right application rate for a customer for his processes about automation? And there's another statement I would like to point out. There is not only one solution which, which fits for all. So re you really have to take care what kind of customer, what is the business, the daily business of a customer, how is the process working, how is uh, the current situation, what might be the situation in the future. So uh, we, we also have done a lot of projects where we have a fully automated solution concept for fully automated solutions, but in future. So we start with some areas and step by step, if really the business is developing as, as, you, as you think about, uh, if you really will have to grow, the performance will grow up and so on, then it makes sense to have stepwise um, more and more automation in, in in the processes. Yeah, that was a, a short introduction and uh, some insights about automation. So of course, I'm an automation guy and that's why I'm pro automation. But um, yeah, I hope uh, you can share a little bit my, my thoughts and uh, I'm really open for some discussions. 
as, as I said, there seems to be some uh, or quite a lot of experience um, in, in the participants, and I really appreciate to have uh, some discussions about it, maybe positive or negative experience. Huh? Fair enough. Well, thank you very much, Mark. That was great. And